But the Young Bucks FTR for the tag team titles, this fucking match was so great. Yep. And I think I'd have to watch the other match again, but I think I think I like this one better. Really? Yes. Yeah. Because I, 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 I do I, remember I, I, that as great as great as the match with Hangman and Adam Page was, it was one of those matches where as I was watching it, there were moments in the match where I thought, okay, like we're going too long. I but, never but thought then, that in well, hold on, let match. me finish. As I was watching, I thought, okay, this is going too long. Like, what's going on? Nothing's happening. But then when the match was over, like, I thought it was fantastic. But when watching this match, there was never one second where there was any downtime or I thought, why is this going so long or it could have been shorter. I was in this match from the opening bell to the closing bell. By the way, by the, the way, I, 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 I just remind Well, hold on. I got to get through this. Okay. The story of this match, obviously, is that Matt Jackson has a bad ankle. And it's the Young Bucks. It's FTR. It's their first match ever. You know the story of both teams. Obviously, the Young Bucks should be doing all this high flying, but they can't because, well, I mean, Nick can, but Matt's injured. It's a perfect match for the Young Bucks to just work them over. They hit all sorts of double team moves from all of the best teams in the last 30 years. They got the Steiner Bulldog, the Power and Glory Suplex. I guess they wouldn't be one of the great teams in the last 30 years, but still it's a but big that, move. That's a, that's, that's, a, that's a move that the Heart attack. The heart attack. Nine, blah, 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 blah. So finally... The, the, then the... the um. The Young Bucks did the stuff with the Rock and Roll Express double drop kick. They did the Hardy's um, Hardy spots. The Senton. But yeah. let's get to the the point here. So they do all of these great matches. They have all these great spots. It's a great match. Selling psychology, the whole nine yards. And finally, at the very end, Dash puts Nick in the reverse figure four. It gets broken up. Dash flips off Matt. He kills him with a super kick. The announcers think that he's knocked out, like he's done. All Dash has to do is is pin this guy. But Mr. No Flips Just Fists decides, I'm going to show these fucking young bucks how to do a flip. And he goes out on the apron, and he tries a springboard 450, which let me tell you something, that's a flip! <laughs> and he misses, and he gets super kicked and pinned. I almost cried at the beauty of this finish. I can only hope that, that like, three years ago, these guys all got together. And they said, you know what? Someday we're going to do a match. Four, four and Dash, ago. you're going to do a fucking flip and miss, and we're going to super kick you. So starting today, <laughs> I want you guys to say no flips, just fists for the next three years. Because in three years, we're going to pay this off. I don't think they did that. that, that, that I don't think that would happen. my God, this think... was such a perfect finish for this match. I loved everything about this match. Oh, I thought it was one. Of the, like I said, I thought it was one of the. It was probably one of the ten best tag team matches ever in the United States. This match was so great. Um, you know, you can. You know, it's funny. The Young Bucks afterwards said, as far as like, um, they said they were the best tag team they'd ever been in the ring with, and they were in the ring with Kenny and Coda. Maybe um, I don't know. Kenny and Coda were were an exceptional, exceptional team. Um, they're completely different styles. I don't. Even, I wouldn't even want to compare the two. Um, but. FTR. But they said best team. Like, Kenny Omega and Kota Bushi are two of the greatest wrestlers that have ever been on the planet. But that doesn't mean that if you put them together, they're automatically the best team there's ever been. They are, though. Kenny Omega and Kota Bushi are one of the greatest teams I've ever seen. They're, without a doubt, they're... Synch you know, they are a fantastic the team. But they're yeah. apparently not the best team. Well, whatever. I mean, they're they're up there. They're one of the best tag teams I have ever seen. I mean, but... FTR for what they do. I mean, those guys. There was so much stuff in this match. It was just like, and it all at the end. It's like, like, like when, um, when like Dash did that like diving tackle and just flew out of the ring and completely missed. You know, just things like that that like played off of stuff that happened earlier in the match. The storytelling in this match. I mean, this is the the. I'll tell you what. The biggest joke in the world, and I mean the biggest joke in the world when it comes to professional wrestling, are idiots who say the Young Bucks don't know how stories because some of the greatest storytelling I don't think anyone I, actually says that anymore. They do. This is a gimmick from years ago. No mm -hmm. one that has more than one follower on Twitter would ever say something like this. These are eggs. Okay. Well, 
the, the I used to hear that about Omega. I've seen people still say it now, but um, which is which is also ridiculous. But these guys have been in some of the best storytelling matches I've seen, and this being one of them. This was, you know, these two teams. Like I said, like there were real high expectations in this match, and if they had had a four star match people would be disappointed they could not have a, a four to four star match which is pretty high you know what i mean that's that's pretty bad almost in some ways but that's the reality but man these guys like like this match like again it needed to go long the young bucks had to win because of the stip and you know what that's why ftr was undefeated coming in because this was going to be their first loss i mean the whole thing from the day that they came in this the way this whole thing went down now granted yes as far as certain aspects of the build um look i didn't get it either and when it was over it's like okay i got it but i still can't say i loved it you know what i mean i mean it was explained i mean if you watch the countdown show it's all explained the story does make sense but i can't say you know to me i would have preferred a different story but as far as the match itself um just you know fantastic absolutely fantastic you know and the, the thing is what's so amazing about this is that like this one the best this match was so great and there's considerable debate over which which was the best match on the show between this and and uh page and omega you know i mean it's well it's, i would i would say without any debate whatsoever that this tag match was the better match and that's taking nothing okay, away from okay. hangman and kenny omega. i'm not I, I i i i i would say the same thing that was but, a, that was a great match but this match i will say also though that people who were there live told me that the uh, page and omega was the better match live well so. maybe live but i all i know is i saw one match on the show that was one of the best matches i ever saw in my whole life and it was this one yeah the other now, one okay, was so, a so, really awesome pay-per-view match Okay, so now in, in Page and Omega, when he did the, the, the You Can't Escape spot, was that a work or was that a shoot? What I think happened was that he fell down, and unlike 99.99999% of wrestlers who would panic and try to get up really fast and do a moonsault, he's so fucking good that when he fell down, he stayed down, and he made you think that this is part of the match. And then he kept going. That's my theory. It was interesting because he grabbed a front face lock for a long time, which made you think that the knee is out. Now, I know he's okay, but again, it's weird because, like, okay to, you know what I mean? Okay to Kenny Omega would not be like, like, okay to Kenny Omega would mean I'm on crutches. You know what I'm saying? But um, it's it's like when I watched that and I thought, you know, it's, it, it's it's like the Suzuki thing. Um, it's like was it anybody else, but I mean, no, no, no. Him falling down on the on the nip up, I didn't think that that was planned. Okay, so so, um, but I was just wondering if like did he tweak his knee, or did he come up at the? Did he just or did he, or was the tweaking of the knee part of the story? And I don't know I, the answer. I to that. think that he fell down, and in his mind, he wanted you to think that this was part of the story and that he had tweaked his knee. I don't think that he actually tweaked his knee. I think he wanted you to think that, and he he made it that after he fell down. He did not mean to fall down, if that makes sense. No, 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 I know he didn't mean to fall yes. down. And well, I think, I, I think I don't once even he want to fell say, down, hey, I, I don't once even, he fell down, I think he thought it would be better to make it a part of the match as opposed to try to jump up as fast as you can and go for the moonsault and, and pretend like it didn't happen. Yeah. And then yeah, play because, into it from there. Yeah, because he took a lot of time going for the moonsault, which if you hurt your knee, that's what you would do. Yes. If you didn't hurt your knee, you would just jump up there and do, you can't escape like you would do it in every other match. Hey, if you're a big fan of Wrestling Observer Radio, we got 12,000 episodes of all of our podcasts up at our website, WrestlingObserver.com. If you sign up today, you get access to every single one of them. The 12 to 18 new shows that we do every single week. You can podcast them, listen to them on the road, at work, working out, in the shower, wherever you listen to your podcasts. And also full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter and archives. So if you love what you hear, head to WrestlingObserver.com. 12,000 audio shows at your fingertips.